Is Monument Valley worth the visit? What about Valley of the Gods? This video answers these questions. Imagine riding a horse through America's Southwest Desert with rock towers of different sizes, up to 75 stories or a thousand feet tall, with red sandstone cliffs reflecting the brilliant afternoon sun. It feels like I am in an old time Western movie. John Wayne will arrive by any moment now with his cowboy hat. That is the majestic, iconic feel of Monument Valley and the Valley of the Gods. Before I go on, please subscribe to this channel for videos on national parks and other beautiful sites. Enable notification to get the latest as I publish them. Hit that like button, it really helps to spread the word on our beautiful lands. Monument Valley is a 92,000 acre Navajo tribal park on Navajo land that straddles the Utah and Arizona border. It is managed by the Navajo tribe, not the National Park Service. There are two ways to visit Monument Valley. You can drive the 17 mile dirt road at the cost of $8 a person, or you can take a tour. The price of the tours vary. The Navajo Tribal Park limits how many cars can enter the road at a time. It is on a first-come, first-served basis, so you may have to wait, depending on the number of visitors. The drive itself snaked through the various named rocks and gave you an up-close view of these iconic formations. The road was bumpy in places, but passable with normal cars if it's dry. It can get very dusty, so a mask may be a good idea if it's windy so that you don't get sand in your mouth. To really experience Monument Valley with its Navajo history, a tour is a good idea. We took the three-hour sunset tour for $80 a person, plus the $8 entrance fee, plus tax, on a beautiful afternoon in October. We booked this October tour in February. The weather was perfect. The sky was clear with temperature in the 70s when we started. By the end of the tour, when the sun was setting, it was in the 60s. There were many companies that provided tours. All of them were sanctioned by the Navajo Nation. There were many types of tours, some of which spent the night in the park, which afforded spectacular views at sunset, sunrise, and stargazing. Our tour had six of us on the back of a pickup truck, which was typical. The tour covered the 17-mile loop, but also extended into areas only available on the tour. Our tour guide told us about the land and the history. He was a good storyteller. The three-hour tour was on a relaxed pace. We had to dodge other groups for a bit, but I didn't feel rushed. The ride was a little bit bumpy. It was during the most beautiful time of the day when the angle of the setting sun made the red sandstone really colorful, in person and in photos. I thought the tour was worth the price. It was a small group, busy but not rushed, with good storytelling, access to places not available without a tour, and at the best time of the day. The tour started at the visitor center. If you get there early, there were viewing platforms for an excellent view of the Mittens formations, the most famous in Monument Valley. Here's a tip. If the main viewing platform by the parking lot is crowded, go to the patio on the back of the restaurant for a less crowded viewing point. Our first stop on the tour was the West Mitten, with the East Mitten and Merrick Butte off to the right. This was the most iconic view of Monument Valley. The road continued around Elephant Butte, Camel Butte, and a short branch to John Ford's Point and the Three Sisters. John Ford was a director of many of the Western movies set in Monument Valley, which made Monument Valley famous. When John Wayne saw the landscape, he said, So, this is where God put the West. The tour veered off the main loop and went to Thunderbird Mesa, Sun's Eye, and Year of the Wind formations. The Big Hogan is a cave-like formation with a round opening on top. 
this is where we stopped and the guy sang native songs in a beautiful, relaxing surrounding. These extra stops really enhanced the experience and made a tour worthwhile. This is very different than the Antelope Canyon tour that we did earlier. So see the link on the screen for a video on that tour. By the time we got back to the mittens, the sun was setting and the soft afternoon sun made them even more beautiful. Valley of the Gods in Utah, near the Arizona border, was also a 17 mile drive with similar scenery to Monument Valley, but the experience was very different. Like Monument Valley, Valley of the Gods had red sandstone rock formations, buttes and mesas that rose from the flat plain. The formations were not quite as dramatic as Monument Valley, but it's still very impressive. The scenery is where the similarity ends. Valley of the Gods is on public land, managed by the U.S. Bureau of Land Management. The Valley of the Gods Road ran between Highway 163 and 261. Highway 163 is just north of Mexican Hat on the left. Shortly before the Mookie Dugway, which was another interesting drive to visit if you get the chance, was the start of Valley of the Gods Road. It ended back on Highway 261, about 8 miles north of Mexican Hat. There is no entrance fee, no services, and no crowds. You can take as much time as you want on this drive. The road is very bumpy in many places. People reported that a passenger car is okay when it's dry. We had a 4x4, but really didn't need it. But I would recommend a high clearance vehicle. Don't take a sports car on this road. I cannot speak to RVs, but we saw small to medium sized RVs camping by the side of the road. There were various name formations that were found on a map we found online, but no signs on the road to indicate them. You can stop anywhere by pulling off the side of the road, and you can hike just about anywhere. Be sure to bring lots of water and remember where your car is. There were places you can park an RV or pitch a tent, but there were no facilities in the park. If you wanted a primitive experience surrounded by beautiful scenery, this was an excellent place. It took us about two hours to do the drive. We stopped at a few places to take photos, but didn't go on a hike because it was late in the day. We traveled west to east from Highway 163 to Highway 261 in the late afternoon. That direction of travel during that time gave us great colorful views of the formation. The road was pretty mundane for the first five miles, but then the dramatic spires, buttes, and mesas came into view. It was spectacular for the next five miles before leveling out on the way to the east entrance. So, Monument Valley or Valley of the Gods? Well, they offer similar scenery, but very different experiences. If you want a free, unhurried, self-guided experience, including camping, then Valley of the Gods is a good bet. However, if you want the best, most dramatic scenery and willing to put up with a crowd and pay a fee, the Monument Valley is a good bet. If you're willing to spend the money, a tour at Monument Valley is well worth it. Of course, you can do both and experience this beautiful landscape both ways, just like us. Monument Valley, Valley of the Gods, and the nearby Mexican Hat, Mookie Dogway, Forest Gump Point, and Gooseneck State Park is an area well worth a visit for a day or two. We are on our way to visit all the national parks in the United States. Follow along by hitting the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and please share it with everybody that you know.